here we are again. Let's come to this. Uh, tonight I want to talk about a koan, and um, I want to just explore it with you and see where we get. And uh, it's, it's a famous old dialogue. So uh, someone asked a, a Chinese teacher called Zhao Zhou, someone said, does a dog have Buddha nature or not? And, um, and Zhao Zhou said, yes, it does. And the person kind of stuck to his guns and he said, um, well, why did it jump into that hairy bag if it has Buddha nature? And <laughs> Zhao Zhou said it knew what it was doing. <laughs> and that's why it became a dog. Actually, I, I, I looked this up with Joe Sutherland, and, and, it says, and, and he invented a word, dog. He said it knew what it was doing, and that's why it dogged. <laughs> it's like you have humaned, and that's why you're here. <laughs> and, uh, and so then someone else asked him, does a dog have Buddha nature or not? And he said, uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and they said, all beings have Buddha nature, why doesn't the dog? And, uh, and he said, it is because it's beginning to awaken in a world of ignorance. Uh, the, the literal thing is, it, because it has um, activity consciousness, which is a kind of consciousness that, it, it, it's, a, it's an ancient theory of, mind and the universe that awakenings happens when you start first start to get delusion you're on the inevitable path towards awakening <laughs> so it's sort of kind of consoling you know? <laughs> so um, this koan became famous for reasons that are not completely clear but um, at least not to me but um, the but it's sort of famous to me because it was the first koan I ever worked on because it was in all the books and I began working on koans alone. <coughs> I thought, this doesn't look too hard, I can do this. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure whether I got anywhere or not, but um, the, you know, the returns aren't in yet. But, um, but it, it was sort of interesting and simplified my mind working with it. And it's made, usually people work with the negative form, with the no form. Um, because I suppose in some ways that's the surprising response. But, but today I just want to look at the whole thing. And, and also, um, usually, when I first worked with this con, I, I really, um, I guess I didn't really care about the question, does a dog have Buddha nature or not? And, you know, I thought, you know, I like my, uh, dogs are great, and uh, that's cool. And that wasn't a question for me, but but somehow to sort of put myself through the koan, I, I, in a certain sense, I treat the koan as if it were, um, you know, a vial of ancient light passed down by this old master, you know, that would then illuminate me, you know, and uh, or the light would be available to me, and so. It, so though, while it wasn't a question for me, I felt like, well, it would do for all my questions. You know? and because, you know, in some sense we realize all our questions are kind of one question. You know? They're all our doubt about life and can I have joy? And did I do it right? And does she like me? And, and um, what should I have for breakfast? And, <laughs> and they're all like, does a dog have Buddha nature? Um, but since I, it's, it's recently I've been thinking of this in another uh, way, or it's come to me in another way, that um, there's a fundamental quality that comes through meditation um, of having to sort of, if you have to take yourself at this moment as being awakened, you know, even if you're a dog, you have to accept that that's all right. <laughs> What's wrong with being a dog, you know? And there's something kind of nice about that, you know? I, I think um, 
I spent a lot of time trying to um, trying to become a different kind of uh, mammal, I suppose, than I was. You know, I, I didn't like to sit still and wasn't very good at concentrating on anything. You know, I was kind of wild. You know, and um, and so I just kept trying not to be wild, and that sort of made me wilder in a way. You know, and. Um, uh, sort of more strange, and so, um, and at some stage I realized that well, um, either people like me can't get enlightened, which is the dog doesn't have brain nature theory, or I'll have to get enlightened as I am, you know? <laughs> which is the other side of the theory. Yes, dogs do have brain nature, beginning to awaken in a world of ignorance. Ignorance, you know. Um, the, he knew what he was doing, and that's why he dogged. You know? So, um, and, and I think I think that's one of the, one of the things I notice about um, the path is I, I've come to value friendship a lot. You know, um, like walking the path year after year and friendship. And one of the things I really notice I value about a friend is um, a friend who's sort of somebody who kind of knows who they. Who isn't defending themselves against themselves, you know, and and I, I value that when I when I catch myself not defending myself against myself, I like that, you know. Uh, but which I mean, most of the, a lot of the time we spend we spend a lot of time presenting ourselves to the world, and it's not very interesting to the world, really, you know. Um, and um, if we really look, it's not very interesting to us. You know? Sort of defending ourselves, you know, and and so I think one of the things, um, you know, when somebody I always used to know if somebody said, "You're this way," if they were right, if I immediately said, "No, I'm not," <laughs> it was a sort of sign they were right. You know? <laughs> and uh, and now it's more interesting to think, "Well, oh, maybe I am," you know, um, whatever it is, you know, I'm accused of. Yes, you're right, <laughs> and um, and somehow it, you know the, the, there's no there's nothing to stand on in this world, you know. So as you are is what you have, you know. You don't have to find a better place to stand than nowhere. I think that meant something. <laughs> the, 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 and you don't have to find a better body to be in than this one. You know? and, um, and that when you realize that, everything will change and you'll change and you'll be a different kind of person anyway, to the extent you are. You know? uh, but, but that comes from this sort of radical embrace of life, really. And uh, I've, been, I've been noticing um, the mystery of what I do. Uh, it, it's a strange thing being a Zen teacher, you know. Um, like I don't like how, I don't really have a good elevator speech for. Well, what does a Zen teacher do? <laughs> you know, so, um, but, but one of the things I think I, I it's a sort of midwifery, I suppose, you know. Uh, um, I think I'm not really in the religion business. I think I'm in the transformation of consciousness business. You know, um, but there's some aspect of religion because of the sense of that I'm in the falling into life business. You know, we're, we do that. We fall. We surrender in a certain sense to let's have this life rather than the other life we might have thought of. You know, let's have this life, and how beautiful that is. And so, so I, so I think, in, in a certain sense, what Zen is, it's a long love affair with, with being human, and with con consciousness, with, with noticing, and, and so, so that's where the creative path comes in, and that's part of being human is, is that we, we listen, and then the universe tells us things, and we find ourselves doing things like that. So I have much more sense of taking instructions from the universe, rather than 
telling the universe how I want it to be. Um, and that's nice, I like that.